welcome to Slash Forward, and to another episode dealing with the brutal and unrelenting apathy inherent in our natural existence, in this case exhibited through a movie called Relic. For more adventures in scab peeling, subscribe to the channel and enjoy. Let's get to it. We open on a bathtub overflowing, spilling its contents down the stairs and creeping toward the naked feet of an elderly lady, who's become distracted by the hypnotic blinking lights of the Christmas tree. Then we transition to Kay and her daughter Sam, traveling out to Grammy's home as we hear a voiceover phone call from a concerned neighbor who hasn't seen Edna for several days. They arrive and venture in via the doggy door, and are disturbed when they get no response and find rotten fruit in the kitchen. Given the likelihood of stumbling across a bloated corpse, Kay has Sam wait in the hallway as she investigates the bedroom, but she whips back her covers and finds nothing. Sam hangs back at the house while Kay goes to make a report with the local police, and we learn the flooding incident from the opening was from one year prior. Then, as they work to build out a timeline for what may have happened to Edna, Kay is forced to admit that she hasn't checked in on her for several weeks. Meanwhile, Sam finds a closet with a lock on it and pushes her way in to grab some fresh linens. While in there, she's momentarily disturbed by some moving plastic, but this turns out to be nothing. Just our minds playing games again. So they spend their time cleaning and keeping busy while in a state of utter confusion and helplessness. The next day, the search party commences, combing the nearby woods looking for Edna. This is capped off by another evening of cleaning and coping. While relaxing with a cigarette, Sam runs across their neighbor Jamie, patrolling the area and helping out however he can. We learn that he isn't allowed to be in Edna's house anymore, so he hasn't seen her for some time. And even though she's not there, and despite the offer of a couple of Lucys, he's still reluctant to enter the house. As Sam and Kay mill about that evening, Sam makes note of the fact that it looks like there are new locks on every door of the house. Here Kay admits that in her last contact with her, Edna thought that someone had been entering the house, leaving doors open, turning lights on, shifting her chair, but Kay had chalked this all up to her dementia and chose to do nothing about it. A bit later, Sam puts on Grammy's cardigan and finds a cryptic note in one of the pockets, advising herself not to follow it. Then there's a thump at the wall, which Kay explores elsewhere, resulting in a reciprocal thump. <laughs> Must be the pipes. When we find Kay next, she's in Dreamland, approaching a dark cabin and finding it contains the desiccated remains of a helpless individual. The disturbing thought sends her to Sam's room, where she snuggles up, put to face. After they settle in, the lights pulse, and we see they're being visited in their bed by an unknown party. Then Kay wakes up to the sound of the kettle on the burner, and she wanders in to find her mom, now returned, but unable to provide any details as to where she's been or what she's been up to. Soon we find her getting checked out by a nurse, and the police are notified of the new development. She appears to be in in relatively good health with a sharp memory, but also has a concerning bruise on her chest, resulting in a recommendation that she be watched for the next few days. And then when Kay is making arrangements to be off work for a bit, she finds a blood-stained nightgown. She confronts her mom about this new evidence, using it as a segue into asking where she was again. But old Edna continues to play coy. I mean, a girl's gotta have her secrets, after all. That evening, we see that her itchy bruise has developed into a fairly severe hematoma. Now that she's feeling good about being back in familiar surroundings, when Sam brings her some tea, she offers to gift her an old wedding ring since she can't get it over her fingers anymore. Then Sam and Kay spend the evening getting some work done and going through some old memories, including a book that may have been drawn by Grandpa, and it connects us back to the old cabin from her dream. We learn it had been on the property back when it was first inherited, and Great Grandpappy had lived in the cabin, up until the time he died, which is kind of how that works. He unfortunately wasn't found for quite a while. Based on this family history, Sam intends to tour a retirement home the next day, since mom needs not just a place to stay, but constant supervision. That night, Kay finds herself unable to sleep, and hears movement coming from downstairs. She creeps down quietly and finds mom in the foyer, whispering to someone. She's helped back to bed where she treats this Will you be all right now? as a loaded question, but she's too distracted to pursue this very far as she claims there's something under the bed. Kay goes in for a closer look and notices a strangely shaped shadow with a hint of movement, but the atmosphere of discovery is broken when she takes a heart back to the head. The next day, we find her taking a tour of the memory assist facility and see that this is a step she's still conflicted about despite the circumstances. Sam returns home to find Grammy dancing, and she's drawn into a whimsical dance lesson. After a bit, the music turns morose, and Sam broaches the topic of what happened with her neighbor to try to get a little more 
context, but she gets brickwalled. So instead, she tries to bring up the idea of coming to live in the house to help out, which would certainly be better than getting carted off to a home. Another strike as Grandma then gets upset by the news that they're considering a home, and she gives her finger the absolute business over getting back the ring she assumes Sam stole from her. Sam then takes a little bath to help ease the pain of coming to terms with the fact that Edna may be beyond her help, and someone comes scratching at her door a bit before moving on. But then later, when they're preparing dinner, she seems to be in a better mood, and states her preference to have Sam move in with her, if it'll keep her out of the home. Later on, Sam goes to check the floodlights, which seem to turn on at random times, and she notices some mold forming around the window they repurposed from the old cabin. She then goes to find Grams whistling in the mirror, and she reveals that this is where she assumed whoever was entering the house had been coming from. She has a general distaste for the cold, unwelcoming house, but it's all she has left to remember her late husband. In her state of vulnerability, she seems to be softening even further to the idea of having company. However, we see that, given the sudden mood shifts and alarming outbursts, Sam is having her own doubts about her ability to administer care. That night, there's another dream about the old cabin. This time, it's Edna who occupies it, and is transformed into a moldy stain. Then she wakes up and follows a whispery sound, and despite seeing a shadow, finds the bathroom empty. Reaffirming Sam's fears, she finds Mamaw the next day, mumbling to herself about suspicions she has regarding the girl's dark intentions for her. When she sees that Edna's bleeding, she tries to help her, but this only results in a fit, during which Grandma brandishes a knife. So Sam heads over to Jamie's house to talk to his father and see if she can get some additional context around why he wasn't allowed to come over. He confides that Jamie had been over and playing hide-and-seek when he hid out in a closet upstairs. Edna, presumably by mistake, locked the door, and also presumably forgot they were playing a game and left him in there. When Alex arrived to check on him, he could hear Jamie screaming from across the house, and he wasn't totally sure how you could forget that you were actively hearing someone scream. Back at the house, Kay sees her mom wandering out into the wilderness. She finds her enjoying a little nostalgic treat, and after she pulls the pictures out of her mouth, Edna continues on her way and finds a primo spot where she can bury the photo book, a project she claims is intended to maintain the safety of the book. Then she laments having the cabin window in her house, and talks about how it sometimes tries to get at her making her wish she could bury herself for safety purposes. Kay, in a moment of mutual vulnerability, asks her mom to come back with her to Melbourne to live with her, and the ladies hug it out. Meanwhile, Sam has returned and is checking out the cursed closet. Since it creeped her out before, she wants to get a sense of how bad the incident with Jamie may have been. In her examination, she shines her flashlight and finds a void behind some of the shelves that leads to another hallway. Back there, she finds a whole new space that seems to be used mostly for storage, and is also riddled with mold. When she finds splitting pathways and multiple doors that are accompanied by strange noises, she opts to get the hell out. But the way back is not as straightforward as she had remembered. She gets all turned around and then discovers that phones don't work back here. So she plan B's it and starts panicking. At dinner time, as they wonder where Sam's off to, Mom defiantly stares Kay in the eye as she soils herself. She's put in the bathtub, which appears to be overdues, and she has mold forming on her skin. And then when Kay goes to clean up, she notices some sort of inky substance in her leavings. Sam continues to wander in the void, finding evidence that Edna's been there as she continues her attempts to escape. Meanwhile, Kay tries to get back into the bathroom to check on her mom, who is unresponsive. When she peers over the top of the door, she finds her mutilating herself. And then, luckily, she just casually walks out. Kay turns off the water, but not before the breakers are tripped. So she's forced to enter her mother's room via candlelight while it's actively being thrashed. When the candle goes out, we hear signs of a struggle, and then Kay finds herself in the closet by the open doorway. Deeper in that space, we find Sam venturing into ever smaller corridors, and see that the creaking and moaning sounds are the house reconfiguring itself. Recognizing that normal rules of social etiquette don't apply here, Sam starts breaking through walls to find a safe spot. Meanwhile, Kate's caught up with her mom, who's crouched down in a corner and, upon closer inspection, appears to be severely damaging her epidermis. At the next junction, Sam finds a hefty pipe and manages to break through what appears to be the backside of the fireplace in the main house. But she pauses momentarily due to sounds of a struggle nearby. She goes to investigate and is warned away by Kay, who says that Mom is not Mom anymore. So they head back to the hole and get to working on it as Edna slowly pursues them, resulting in a brief game of tug-of-war into the living room, and then a bit of a lady wrestle that ends with a pipe to the face. Kay then gets an emotional hook in her after glancing back for one last pitiful look. Remembering the fate of her ancestor, she decides that she can't leave her mom to be lost here, only kept company by the creeping mold. She locks Sam out and then carries her mom upstairs and sets her down on the bed. Here, she pauses for a moment to assess her wounds and begins
begins to peel off some of the now unnecessary skin flaps that are hanging off of her. She seems to be part of the 3% of the population that finds this activity addictive because she just keeps on going until she's stripped away the entire facade. This act of kindness seems to have a calming effect as she sits there patiently and quietly wheezes away. Sam then returns, having gained access to the house, and they lay the matriarch to rest, arranging themselves into a triple spoon situation, from which Sam takes note of the rot now present in her mother. I have a website set up where you can support the channel through donations or merch. And I'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors, memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. Oh yeah, brace yourself if I forgot to say that before, Relic was a very well put together slow burner. It does a great job of creating an allegory for hereditary end of life memory loss in a way that I think would be familiar to anyone who's had to go through it, so it's sort of a double whammy of realistic horror. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.